The tower building on the old Minninger grounds remains one of the more visible structures on the Topeka skyline. In today's Plains People segment, we meet a man who saw this clock tower as confirmation that this was where he was supposed to be. Well, I was born in Oregon, but then we moved to Minnesota when I was one month old. <laughs> so I always think of myself as somebody from Minnesota. I came here to Harrington, Kansas to fly in B-29s and get used to using the uh, Honeywell autopilot. But I only came here, I was only here for one week. And then, then as soon as I finished that training, I went to Tinian out in the middle of the Pacific, 1,500 miles south of Tokyo. And well, after the war, then I came back uh, and, and lived in California for a while. And then finally decided that there was something interesting about the human being that I really found more interesting than about particles. When I was uncertain as to where to go, I meditated. And I got a dream in which I saw the tower building. And when I got out of the air airplane at, at uh, Topeka, and drove over to the tower building, I could hardly believe it. There it was, exactly as I saw it, with the clocks and everything. And I was hired, not to be a psychologist, but I was hired in order to set up their biomedical lab. Sometimes we forget, you know, that it's natural for the body to be well. It's natural for the body to heal itself. And we have procedures that help uh, with that process. This machine, the temperature machine, does nothing to you or for you except to give you information. It gives you information by which you can learn to self-regulate the various processes uh, in, in your body. And it happened that one of the people who came in as a research subject had a migraine headache. And while I was measuring blood flow and heart rate and all that sort of thing, all of a sudden there was a huge blood flow change in her body, in her, in her, in her hands. And, and I said to her afterwards, what happened to you? two minutes ago, and she said, how did you know my migraine went away? And there was an increase of blood in the hands. And so that was the clue. And in 69, we started the Biofeedback Society, and then people began doing it everywhere. And immediately then, people started building more circuits of all kinds, not just for feedback of temperature, but for feedback of muscle tension and everything. And so then, in, then it was brain waves. And that's how the neurophysiology nowadays, which is spread all over the country, all over the world, actually, uh, that neurophysiology all started from, uh, from putting electrodes on my head. Isn't that funny? We spent three months going everywhere, from one yogi to another. And we went all around India. We went 6,000 miles visiting yogis. And every time we'd get there, we'd wire them up, heart rate, blood pressure, um, breathing rate, brain waves. And then we'd say, okay, uh, what, what can you do? And then we ended up with brain waves, heart rate, blood pressure of all these yogis that we were working with. We knew stuff then by, the, by that time that no one had ever done before. So that was a good, it was really fun.
And anybody who ever said to me, this is not possible, I said, oh yeah, come to my lab and I'll wire you up and you'll be doing it before you know it. What you can do is everything that a yogi can do. There's nothing that a yogi can do that you cannot do. All you have to do is have a training program. Your problem is you don't know how. No big deal. All you have to do is find out how to do it. I called it the Ozaki Book of the Dead because I, I didn't want to have it mixed up with the Tibetan Book of the Dead. But it's actually the same stuff. Elise started noticing that she couldn't remember things. And that was the beginning. So, and, and as an Alzheimer patient, she didn't, didn't recognize me. So when I said who I was, then she would remember. And she would remember for at least an hour. And I had to get used to that. Because that went on for a long time. And so, so that was how come I then began understanding that people who have Alzheimer's are really halfway between this world and that world, and they're right in the middle. It's rather interesting that since Elise was halfway between, once in a while, when she'd have a clear state of consciousness, I could say to her, tell me what, so what, what you're finding out. What is it like over there? And what she began telling me was exactly what I'd learned. One time, when she could, hadn't talked to me for four days on end, because as an Alzheimer patient, she couldn't find out the words, then she woke up and she said, it's time for me to tell you that you have to take care of yourself too. You've been taking care of me now for, for several years. And she says, but it's important that you eat the right stuff and that you, you take care of yourself too because you're going to continue on. You have more work to do. I'm done. And she said it directly. And I said, well, are you telling me that you're going to leave right now? And she said, oh, no, no, I'm not, I'm not saying that because I, she doesn't know when she's going to leave. And I'm not going to anticipate it. Isn't that funny? She's talking about her brain and her normal human appearance. She's talking to me like a soul.